Okay, so here we go again, another Dell XPS 15 video. Trust me, I am not excited to make this video, but you guys asked me where my XPS was in one of my previous videos, and you know, I haven't had my laptop for about a month, and that's why my XPS wasn't there in that video, and I thought I'd share the story on what happened to my XPS with you guys, because there are a few of you guys that are really into the XPS lineup like I am. So without further ado, let's begin the story. So it was on April 16th, I was just after school working on robotics because it was right before the world competition and I tried to turn on my laptop and it wouldn't turn on. So the issue simply was I would press the power button, the power LED would turn on but the screen was just black, it didn't turn on at all. And you know, that would happen, I would keep holding it, turn it off and press it back on. This would go about 10 to 30 minutes and sometimes I would finally be able to boot into Windows. And on the occasion that it does boot into Windows, it does two of these things. Either it completely freezes as soon as it's in Windows or it runs perfectly fine until the computer falls into sleep or until I close the lid because after I try to resume it from sleep, it would not turn on at all. So right off the bat, the first thing that came to my head was that this is a RAM problem. However, I wasn't trying to be too much of a geek myself, so I just decided to ring up Dell and see what they had to say about this. So I talked to a Dell agent for about an hour and a half diagnosing this situation. And in fact, here is an email picture that I sent to him showing what the screen looked like because at one point, he gave me some sort of command to actually do the Dell diagnostic because I wasn't able to boot into Windows and 10 minutes into the diagnostic my screen looked exactly like this. So I sent an email to him and he was like okay so after talking to his supervisor he either thinks it's a motherboard issue or a RAM issue but he said that he was most likely thinking it's a motherboard issue. So then I told him about the on-site warranty that I had because I paid extra to get Dell come over to my house and fix my laptop and then he said yeah that's completely fine so he decided to send out a part to fix my laptop. So here exactly is the parts that he sent, here's the email, I'll put that up on the screen for you guys. Um, it doesn't necessarily say uh, motherboard here but it shows the parts that were shipped out, there's a dispatch number. I'll blur those out though. So they sent the parts out and I think after about 3 days a technician showed up to my house. I actually was not home when this happened, I left the laptop at home and then I left the school. However, the technician came, looked at the laptop and had not done anything. So apparently what my dad said was the technician looked at the laptop and blah blah blah. He said that the laptop was completely fine when it came to hardware and it was freezing because of the Linux operating system that I had on my computer and it was Ubuntu at the time. Uh, this completely didn't make sense to me because I've been running Ubuntu for a while now, so for it to be freezing all of a sudden really didn't make sense. However, I wasn't home so I wasn't able to you know, argue or just you know, mention anything. My dad, obviously not knowing too much about my computer, he just agreed with what the technician said. So when I got home, somehow the technician was able to boot into Windows, I really don't know how. But you know, I thought he fixed the laptop, I thought it was actually my fault, I thought it was something that I messed up on my part, I thought it was software, whatever, right? So I was using my laptop for that day, once again, turned off the laptop this time, and I tried to turn it on the next day, and we're back to the same issue. Laptop was not responding, it was back to day one. And I, at this point, I was super frustrated because I asked for fast shipping and a fast technician to come over because it was like 2-3 days because April 23rd was the day I was leaving for the competition so I knew that I had to get my laptop fixed from the first technician and to find out that the first technician was unsuccessful I knew that I was screwed because by the time the parts get shipped out and the second technician comes out I will be in America so I had to go through so much frustration with this I had to transfer all my code to github use my friend's MacBook, shout out to him for letting me use it, and I had to leave my laptop here in Canada while I was in America just so the second technician can come and fix it. So here's what happened. So keep in mind, something I found on the Dell forms or whatever was that there is a chart built based on the LED patterns that you get on the front of the thing. And there was like amber and white LED flashes and stuff like that. So here's an email that I sent to the first agent that I ever talked to about the technician. So let me read it off for you. 
Hello John, the technician came yesterday for the repair. He suggested that the laptop did not need a motherboard replacement and was able to do some temporary fix, but the issue came back today. In fact, I was able to get a recording of the problem that I described to you over the phone. Upon doing some research on my own, I found a table on a Dell forum mentioning that four white LED blinks and two amber LED blinks indicate a RAM failure, which means that it is exactly what I first thought the problem was. In this email, I have attached a video to give you a better understanding of the problem. As of right now, I cannot even turn on my laptop and I have to leave for America on Tuesday for my Vex Robotics competition. I hope there is some way of resolving this issue as soon as possible. So this was sent on April 19th and by now I knew I was kind of screwed so I already made the plan of using my friend's laptop. So I sent a video, here's the video if you guys want to look at what I was talking about. And after sending him the video, he sent me a message back saying, I'm sorry I just read your email today since I was out when you sent it and I see that here you already contacted us and dispatch was already made for the motherboard and RAM. Oh yeah, so uh, even though I sent that email, I couldn't wait for him to reply so I called and I talked to a new agent and I diagnosed again for about another hour and a half and then after telling him about the LED blinks and stuff, finally this agent was able to, you know, confirm that yes, it sounds like it's most likely a RAM issue but then he said that because this is the second technician and he wanted to make sure this would be the last time I had to get a repair. He made sure to get me sent out a motherboard and a RAM replacement. So shout out to him for trying at least, but things just get worse. So here's the email. So again, more parts were sent in for my laptop. There you go. And then the second technician comes. However, this time also, I wasn't at home, my dad was here, but the second technician successfully replaced the motherboard and the RAM. But here's the problem. So I have a 16 gigabyte uh, RAM on my Dell XPS 15, right? But they only sent, or Dell only sent, one RAM stick, which is eight gigs. So the technician had to randomly choose which one of the RAM sticks does he replace. So that was kind of stupid so apparently even the technician told my dad that it was just kind of stupid of Dell to only send one RAM stick when the laptop has two so pretty much the technician was playing a game of guessing and kind of trying to guess which RAM stick was causing the RAM failure so the motherboard was replaced and one of the RAM sticks was replaced by the technician that came the second time so after the second technician left the laptop was at home, I was in America at this time, so the technician came on I think April 25th or whatever, regardless, I wasn't home, apparently it was fixed, I was glad to hear that in America, I came back, right, so on April 29th, I sent an email to someone that, you know, sent a follow back to me, saying, hello, the laptop was repaired, however, the technician was only sent one RAM stick, but I have the 16 GB2 RAM stick model. And then I was sent a reply saying, I'm glad to hear that the system is working now. We only sent one 16 GB RAM because only one of the RAM is failing, but no worries, we can assure that your system is now fully functional. We truly appreciate your patience in blah, 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 whatever, right? So this was kind of false because I kind of, fell for this i thought i only had one 16 gig ram but apparently my uh dad said the technician said that there are two 8 gig ram sticks instead of one 16 gig so this part of the bat is just false information by this supervisor so you know april 29th laptop was still working fine i was like you know what whatever who cares somehow the laptop is working that's all i need to worry about right so i was using my laptop and then i emailed them on may 7th so about a week after I emailed them saying the laptop is again broken and this time I was told that the CPU is the fault based on the LED pattern. I'm completely frustrated. Please review my case and arrange a replacement. I have been more than patient with this laptop and have invited two technicians into my house. I will not have this problem again. My work has been held back because of this laptop not turning on. Look at the attachment to see the error. So basically what happened was about a week of using it after coming back from America the laptop caused the same problem well not exactly so the problem was that the laptop again wasn't turning on but this time the LED pattern was different so here's a video of the new LED pattern and 
I called another agent for about another hour and a half and this time he confirmed that it was a CPU problem and I referred to that Dell forum graph or table whatever I saw that day and it was correct. The pattern matches exactly to a CPU failure and this time I was confused. I was like the CPU is related to the motherboard. I mean it's with the motherboard, right? So that would mean that the motherboard that they sent was faulty. So they're sending me faulty replacement parts to fix an already faulty laptop. That got super annoying. So I sent the video of proof. I sent another email and I believe that this is when the issue was actually taken seriously. So I was emailed back saying your issue has already been escalated to the lowest. I mean, obviously he was trying to write highest, but just pointing that out. Highest escalation team, please reply to their email directly to further assist you. Um, okay. And I think from here onwards, I was contacted by a special person from the Dell corporate office. I think that this is called the Advanced Resolution Center. And uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm not trying to read the boring stuff. So a lot of the uh, conversations after this happened over the phone. So a lot of this stuff was, uh, I tried returning your call. I tried calling you, blah, blah. So none of the emails here are that important. Uh, so May 11th, I shipped the laptop out to them. So what I really wanted was for them to give me a replacement because an exchange pretty much because I was just frustrated and they failed to repair it twice. So I wanted a replacement. However, I they apparently they sent a request to their replacement or exchange department and they denied the request. So, you know, the guy told me from the resolution team or whatever that the only option that I had was to send in the laptop. I was like, okay, so I paid for the extra on-site warranty. Can I get a third technician to come to my house? Even though I was already frustrated. And then he said that apparently after two failed on-site repairs, it is compulsory to send the laptop over to them to fix in store or wherever they fix their laptop. So I, w I finally had to agree to it because I pretty much had no other option. And then I shipped the laptop May 11th. And then after sending it out on May 11th, May 13th, I got a reply saying, this is to inform that the computer has been received and it was at the uh, repair center. And then I was sent another email on May 13th. So yeah, on the same day, I was sent another email saying that the computer was repaired and with the tracking number saying that it's on the way back. So, and then May 15th, they called me to see how the laptop was doing. I said, it's working fine. And May 15th to May 19th right now, the laptop has been working perfectly fine. However, so like I said before, even when the second technician came and fixed it, it worked fine for the beginning and then it kind of went back to breaking or whatever. So it could break again. I really don't know. It could break again, but it is working fine for now. So this was a, almost a month process of just wasting my time. So pretty much from um, April 16th to May 15th was fully disastrous for me. I couldn't even use my own laptop at a world's robotics competition. I had to code on a MacBook. It was fully inconvenient for me, but I had to go through all that stuff. Now it's back. Hopefully it's never going to break again. Um, so they did replace the motherboard. Apparently that's what I was told. And it seems to be fine. They apparently said they cleaned the heat sink and all that stuff or whatever too. So I've noticed the performance is a lot better, but hopefully it stays that way. Like what I, taken out of this is Dell is a great company like Dell product wise is really good like the reason why they're still living is because of this XPS series and I have to say after going through warranty issues with the Inspiron gaming laptop and this XPS 15 the XPS support department is 10 times better than their regular Inspiron department I don't know why they seem more professional and more knowledgeable than the Inspiron department. So that's just something that I want to throw out there. So if you do end up getting an XPS, I feel like there's no real way of you getting completely screwed over because they will keep persevering your case and they will keep helping you fix it. However, in terms of how fast they will fix it or how durable and reliable their fixes are, that's kind of questionable. So the takeaway from this whole situation is that Dell is still great in terms of trying to help the customer and Dell is still great in terms of their products, but they're nowhere near the quality that Apple is because I can almost guarantee you if I had the same problem with the MacBook, 
two things would happen. I would either take it in store where I could walk in anytime, give them my laptop and they will repair it and I can go pick it up from the repair center. Something that Dell doesn't have is any repair centers. You can't walk in at all and you have to ship your laptop out, which I hate doing. And the second thing that Apple could possibly do is just give me an exchange. A lot of companies offer exchanges and Dell is a company that does not like to offer exchanges. I don't know why. Maybe it's because they feel like they're not as profitable as those guys to be able to do that comfortably. But I feel like giving exchanges and you know reducing repairs just gives a better taste in the customer's mouth. Um, so overall, what I've taken away from this is until Dell improves their customer support and product quality, like not the product itself, but the quality control, I probably won't buy another Dell. I think I've already made this clear with my Inspiron video, but it's just I can't be bothered with this, especially when I enter university. You just can't afford to not have a laptop for a month. So yeah, that's why I was using this old laptop you guys saw in the previous video. That's why editing on that thing was super hard, but I still managed to pull off a dope video using that laptop. Yeah, render times are crazy, but trust me, I pulled it off. So it's awesome to have this guy back. It's awesome to be able to edit properly again. And yeah, how do you guys think I burned a motherboard, a RAM, and a CPU? Was it because I was doing crazy edits, gaming, what it is? I don't even know. I don't even game. And my edits aren't even that intense, so I don't know what it was. Whatever it was, it's gone. We're happy. Anyways, this is Tech Alpha. Signing out with today's video. This one was a long video, but if you guys made it all the way to the end and you guys liked it, be sure to drop a like, subscribe, and also be sure to turn on those post notifications to know whenever I release future content. And with that being said, this is Tech Alpha. I will see you guys in the next one, and peace out.